Last video, I built and painted Timea's Martyr 1. The paint scheme puts it in France in September 1944. A quick look at reference pictures from this exact vehicle at the time would show lots of stowage and it covered in camouflage. Not just any camouflage, a camouflage of leaves and branches. So I started, of course, by making a tarp. I used some green stuff and I rolled it really thin with flour because I didn't have any baby powder or talc powder, but it worked just fine. And after I was happy with the look of the tarps, I hit it with a little bit of tap water. And everything was cleaned off nicely. It also left a little bit of a texture that I think works as if it was a tarp. After I mounted everything up into something that was easier to paint with, I 3D printed a jig to make the netting. Now, this netting was used to fix the branches to the actual sides of the tank, and I decided to make them out of the thinnest wire I could find. I don't actually know if the nets themselves were made out of metal or if they were made out of ropes, but to get the look I was going for, I made them out of metal and I painted them as if they were metal as well. After I got a little bit of solder on all of these joints, they were not going anywhere. It was a little fiddly and I'd probably redesign this if I was going to do it again, but I was happy with how the netting came out. Quick clean up later, they were ready to go. I needed to make four nets in total, two small ones and two larger ones that go on the sides of the armor plating. The smaller ones are fitted to the front armor shields of the gun. Since I don't think these nets were specifically designed for the vehicle, and were probably put on in the field, they were only affixed to where I believe the tarp gets affixed to the top of the fighting compartment. So there was some noticeable sag in the nets when they were put on the vehicles. But since we were using metal wire, it was easy to make those sags look realistic. Primed everything black, and then went through and did some sponge chips to make them look a little bit more rusty and have different variations. I started with German gray and then added a little bit of deck tan to that to lighten it up. Then went over it with some rust washes and finally some lighter shades of gray to pull out some detail. For the rust colors, I just used everything I could find in AK's Rusting Stains and Streaks kit. It's a good place to start. I finished everything off with some streaking grime because that's how I weathered the rest of the tank. I used some super glue to fix them to the sides of the armor panels. They weren't going anywhere after that. I wanted the nets to be noticeable, but I also didn't want them to look out of place. That's important when you're weathering a kit that has features that you've made after the fact. Also in the reference photos, there seemed to be some sort of cable running up the barrel of the gun. So I made that out of the same wire and painted it up the same way. I did try and paint as much as I could off the barrel so I wouldn't have any mistakes. Now it was time to get back to all the stowage. I actually did paint the jack at the same time as I painted the rest of the model, so I wouldn't get the colors mixed up. It's kind of important. If you are going to do this after the fact, maybe write down the exact mix of paints that you use, or if you buy the exact paints, just keep them handy so you don't get anything mixed up. This was done in the same hairspray chipping method and was a great base for additional steps to come. I 
did notice in the reference photos I was going off of that there were some spare wheels that the kit did not come with. So I did my best to 3D print some that I modeled and then I painted them the exact same way. Again, using the hairspray chipping technique and the same paints that I used on the model itself. I really recommend using the hairspray technique on all your road wheels. For one, they're almost always banged up from normal wear and tear. Two, it's always an easier way to get the overspray off of the rubber or outside rim of the wheel. And there's no masking required. End of story. I used camouflage plastic putty to keep all of the detail work I had already painted safe as I did highlights for the jerry cans. And I took note of how I was going to position these cans, so I put the highlights where the sun would be hitting them. So if it was on its side, hit it from the side. If it's going to be standing up, hit it from the top. This one I marked as a water can, even though the words on it say it was for fuel, but I didn't have one without the fuel word written, so I made the best of it. I weathered this the same way with some hairspray chipping. This went a little overboard, but it was easily fixed with some sponge chipping after the fact. Another benefit of highlighting all of your stowage is that you can chip it with the same base color. It looks really good like that, and it looks pretty realistic. Everything was then hit with a streaking grime pin wash and any excess was blended away with mineral spirits. I did a little bit more traditional paint job for the tarps. I did my more tried and true wet blending method. It takes a little bit longer, but there was just no way to spray highlights on this tarp that was underneath the jack. So I just kind of blended them this way. And then I blended the other tarp the exact same way, even though I could have put highlights and glazed that one, I wanted them both to look the same. After that, it was just some quick rust washes and chips on the spare track. And I hit that with a little bit of graphite as well, just because I thought those areas needed a little bit more definition. I sprayed all the shells and the shell casings with Alclad's lacquer. This is pale burnt metal, and I cannot say enough about this paint. It is so smooth, airbrushes so well right out of the bottle, and it just makes everything look like metal. It's amazing. They would just hit with a little bit of streaking grime, pull out the details, and then they were loaded onto the tank. There's the other tarp we painted up. And after the interior details were placed, I could remount the Pack 40 for the final time. Adding a camouflage like this uh, requires a little bit of planning because the branches are going to be quite delicate. So I wanted to do everything before that needed to be placed on the tank. I also needed to remove the running gear one final time to weather the underside of the vehicle. I did this with some spatter dry mud effects mixed with a little bit of plaster and a little bit of soil from my backyard. This went on really nicely and it dried to a nice hard finish. I basically did this just to cover up any of the plastic markings that were left over from the manufacturing of the kit itself. Instead of covering that with putty, I just covered it with dirt. Before everything dried, I just used a wet brush and I pulled some streaks down. And then I did the same thing for all the edges where maybe mud would accumulate. 
I then used this light dust deposits from AK. Now, this is the first time I ever used this product. It is enamel based, so I laid it down where I wanted the lighter areas of dust and mud to be. And then I used a damp brush with mineral spirits and started dragging that down the sides of the hull. And I did this after letting it dry for a minute or two. I didn't want to wipe everything away. So let it set up just a little bit and then applied light pressure to get some streaks going. I then went back over everything else with brown earth because the areas that would have remained a little bit more wet were now covered in the dry dust. I find it's easier to work that way than worrying about uh, trying to keep the dark areas dark. So hit everything with light first and then pull the wetter areas out at the end. I was happy with that light accumulation. Now we put the running gear on for the last time and it was time to start working on these branches. I started off by using these oak leaves. Um, I thought this was the way I was gonna go, but then I realized they were a little too big for scale. So I used this smaller hole punch to make these slightly smaller leaves. They also have a little bit of variation, so that gave it a little bit more texture as well. I cut these seafoam trees down to the smallest uh, pieces I could and then I dipped them in some regular PVA glue and just started hand applying the leaves to them. This was definitely tedious, but it was easy enough to do just with a podcast on or the TV, just sitting at night. And it went by pretty quickly. You could definitely use foam for this. Um, or some other easier materials. But I just thought since it's such a focal point on this build, I really wanted to use the actual leaves. But I didn't like that color, so I really wanted to make sure I painted everything. So I went through the process of hitting every leaf with different variations of yellows and greens and I found some really great reference material to show uh, modern vehicles with uh, live branches on them. And you get a pretty good idea for the color variation that you should go with. I wanted to get some darker ones as well, show that some of the leaves had started to dry since they have been cut off the tree, and then darkened up all of the branches as well colors don't really matter um, just find what works for you but nothing specific I wouldn't worry about that after that it was just a matter of placing everything on the vehicle I started off by what I thought was a dry run and I placed everything on the vehicle without any glue uh, and to my surprise, the netting worked exactly how it did in real life. There was no glue holding these branches on in the field. Uh, I did, after the fact, go in and fix most of them in place, but it worked out really well. I hit everything with some buff because I wanted to make sure that the leaves hanging closest to the running gear would have some buff on them as well from dust that kicked up. And then just added some streaks of dust and some spills from oil coming out of the running gear. After that, just a quick dust on the tracks themselves. We called it good. I'm really happy with how this came out. I think it comes a long way from the base coat and I think now it's a really fun and interesting looking model. Thanks so much for watching. Next video, we're gonna start working on the diorama. See you next time.